Welcome back to the PID control with Arduino lecture series. In this lecture, I'll be going over how to implement the PID controller in code on the Arduino. Now in the past four lectures, we discussed feedback control and the PID terms, but we never really specified the domain of its implementation. The mathematical equation written here is a controller expressed in continuous time or in the analog domain. Now studying the controller in the continuous or analog domain makes it easier for us to realize what is going on. But most controllers these days are implemented digitally in software. So if you want to implement this controller on the Arduino, we're going to have to convert it to the discrete time or digital domain. As we can see here, not much has changed at all. Since we're in the digital domain, we must treat each signal as a discrete sample. The proportional term is just the gain multiplied by the discrete error signal. The integral term is now a sigma summation. And the derivative term is simply the difference between the current error and the previous error. Now in the digital domain, graphically our control signal looks like this. Now as you can see here, the control signal u of n is computed discreetly every t seconds in time. This uppercase t is the sampling time, or a fixed time interval the PID controller takes to compute a new value for the output. And if we take a look at the discrete equation again, this capital T is essentially the delta t of the continuous domain. Now because in our loop we're going to call the PID function in intervals of t seconds, we can treat this t as a fixed constant. And this will be a lot clearer when I get to the coding part. So here we have the PID control algorithm written out on the Arduino IDE. I'll now proceed to explain the code line by line. So first we start off by defining the variables needed for the computation. And you'll notice that most of these are of the double data type or floating point. This is needed because it allows more precise computation. Now just to make things easier, I kept the computation of the control signal in a separate function called PID control. Now, in order to make sure that we get a uniform interval of sample time t, we first start off by storing the current time the program has been running by using a inbuilt function called millis. This function essentially gives you the number of milliseconds passed since the start of the program. And now that we can keep track of the current time, we can compute the delta time by subtracting the current time from the previous time. Now, to get the updated control signal every t seconds, we have an if condition whereby if the time interval during the loop equals or exceeds t, the control signal is computed and updated. This if condition is what allows a controller to get called every t seconds, and it makes realizing the controller a lot easier. Our error term is simply the set point minus the sensed output. The total error refers to the integral term of accumulating the error every t seconds. The delta error refers to the derivative term, where it's just the current error minus the last error. So once those values are computed and obtained, we can sum them up to form our control signal. And you can see here that the summation is pretty much the same as shown in the discrete expression. So once the control signal is computed, we have to store the error as last error for the next iteration. And the same goes for the time. This pretty much covers how the PID control algorithm is implemented on the Arduino. Let's take a look at an example of a cooling fan system. Now I'm not going to go ahead and build this or anything. I just want you guys to see how the code would be set up in this case. Now say if we want to regulate the temperature. The temperature is set by the cooling fan which is driven by a motor driver. The motor driver receives a PWM signal from the output pin of the Arduino. To sense the temperature, we're using a 3-pin analog temperature sensor, which sends an analog voltage signal to the analog pin of the Arduino. Now here's the code for this example. I've set the sample time to 50 milliseconds, meaning that every 50 milliseconds the PID control algorithm will produce a new signal value. And I'll go over in the next video how you should select the right sample time. We assign our sensor pin to the corresponding analog pin. Here I put A5 as an example. We then make two variables to store the value. In the void loop function, we assign the analog voltage we're reading to the variable sensor voltage. 
by multiplying this by a scalar, we get the temperature in Celsius. And now we have our sensed output. Now, if we want our desired temperature to be 25 degrees, for example, we set our set point to 25. We then call our PID control function, which then produces a value between 0 and 255, which sets the duty cycle of the PWM on the output pin. And there you have it, that's how a PID controller is implemented on the Arduino. One thing we should also do is limit the control signal to the values our process is allowed to take. For example, in this case, the PWM range in the Arduino is limited between 0 and 255. So we don't want our controller to output values such as 300 or negative 50, and we can limit this by adding two conditional if statements. We'll also want to do this for our accumulated total error, because if our total error accumulates past 255, and then let's say there's a drop in the set point, it'll take a couple iterations for the total error to dissipate back to the 0 to 255 range, and that can cause a time delay on the output. This is known as integral windup. So I know this was a lot of information to take in just one video, but I implore you guys to rewatch it many times as you need until it becomes clear to you. Now I haven't shown you guys how to properly select and tune the KP, KI, and KD constants. Tuning these parameters is a challenge on its own, and that's why I've dedicated the subject of PID tuning for a later video. Thank you for watching, I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.